Welcome, Neil. Thanks for taking the time to tune in and be a part of the series. No problem. Thanks Looks like the beard's coming along well. Yeah, the quarantine's going to help with that, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, uh, how, so how has this uh, situation affected you so far and uh, how are you dealing with it? Uh, well, basically, March 12th, my uh, world came to a bit of a halt. Um, March 14th, I was supposed to be fighting in Edmonton for a title fight, uh, and that got canceled on March 12th when we were just on the outskirts of Edmonton. Uh, we got the phone call and had to turn around and come home. You know, the event was canceled because, uh, you know, the province said no gatherings over 250 people. Um, and I had spent the last 10 weeks training for that fight, uh, put off a lot of work because of it. And uh, so that was a huge hit um, in more ways than one. Uh, with that fight being canceled and then uh, coming back and you know not being able to work at the gym because the gym basically shut down classes stopped and then the gym closed down uh, so I haven't so I've had to switch things up a little bit um, I got a few people that I work with online now uh, put them through workouts do FaceTime or whatever um, but the one thing that I'm doing now is I've wanted to spend a little bit of time focusing on my photography and building that side of of my life. So that's what I'm kind of focusing on now. I've uh, got a little, a little uh, Facebook group now that I've started and starting to try and put a little more effort into to building that um, as my little side business that I've had for a while. So that's one positive, I guess, to take away from everything that's happened. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, can you uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, your, your kind of history in jujitsu? Sure. Um, I teach martial arts at the Canadian Martial Arts Center. Um, I also do personal training out of that gym as well. Um, I've been doing martial arts for going on 20 years now. I started with boxing when I was in junior high, and then I got into jiu-jitsu and kickboxing, MMA, uh, and Jeet Kune Do when I was about 18. And uh, I've been with the same instructors since I was 18. Um, same gym. I mean, we've moved multiple times and whatnot, but I've been out of the same place for that long. Um, and yeah, I teach uh, kids classes, adult classes, jujitsu, kickboxing, MMA, all that stuff out of that gym. And that's my main priority um, is, you know, teaching and training people. Uh, and then aside from that, I also fight professionally. Uh, I've been, I fought professionally for about five years when I was younger. And then I took some time off and I've come back and I was supposed to have my fourth fight back um, since I returned on uh, March 14th, but I got canceled. Uh, so that, yeah, I have that. And then, uh, aside from that, I do photography on the side a little bit. Awesome. So that fight in Edmonton, that was an MMA fight. Yeah. Yeah. That was going to be an MMA fight, uh, five, five minute rounds for the unified, uh, light heavyweight title. Wow. Uh, that's, that would have been really disappointing, especially so close to it. Yeah. Two days before the event. <laughs> Luckily I hadn't started, hadn't really started uh, cutting weight yet. So didn't have to. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, to cut some weight after being inside for so long. Yeah. Um, so what advice do you have for people working out at home with minimal equipment? Because most people are used to going to a gym or um, taking classes, stuff like that. And now they're very possibly trying to work out at home for the first time and stay motivated to do that. So what advice do you have for those people? My advice for pretty much everybody is to keep it simple. Uh, a lot of people, they look to, uh, you know, Instagram and stuff like that. And they watch people, uh, these influencers, and uh, they do a lot of interesting exercises and people try to duplicate it. And the fact is those exercises don't really aren't any better than, you know, your simple push-ups and squats and stuff like that. So my advice is always to keep it simple um, and to focus on something. So if you're weak in an area, maybe it's your squats, right? Now you have lots of time to focus on learning how to squat deep into your squats um, to work on form and stuff like that. Uh, so keep things simple. Um, you don't have to do 37 different things in a workout. You know, you can do three or four things and get uh, better results out of putting some, uh, some focus into that and some volume into you know, four exercises as opposed to 10 separate ones. Um, and, uh, you know, work on something that maybe is a weakness of yours, or maybe it's a strength and you want to improve that. It's another, a, a great time now is to, you know, actually focus on one thing and, and improve it. 
How do you suggest people stay motivated to work out at home on a regular basis or stick to a plan? Um, well, I'm not a big proponent of motivation. Uh, well, motivation is uh, very fleeting. It comes and goes. Motivation is uh, great for, you know, getting people started to go to the gym. You know, they're motivated mm -hmm. to go, but motivation is not going to keep you going, you know, every week. And to get results out of going to the gym and, you know, eating healthy and that, it, it takes uh, discipline. Uh, discipline's going to get you to the gym when you're tired or sore or, you know, you had a busy day and you don't feel like going. Discipline's what gets you to the gym, not motivation. So my big thing is to uh, try to build a routine and, uh, you know, create discipline in yourself. Whether you're tired or not, you go anyways. Right. You just, you build a habit of going to the gym every day, not every day. Right. But you know, four or five days a week, depending on what your goals are and uh, mm -hmm. you know, stick to discipline. Motivation is great, but it comes and goes. So for people in specialized sports uh, like yourself in jujitsu, what advice do you have for maintaining your skill level and maintaining your athletic ability when you might not have access to training facilities. And I know this will apply to a lot of people in different sports, like hockey, you can't, it'd be hard to train at home, right? Um, so my advice to, to people, um, well, we'll, just, we'll talk about jujitsu right now. Uh, jujitsu is interesting right now because YouTube is huge for tutorials. Uh, you could spend hours on YouTube or the internet in general and uh, look at you know, 10,000 different techniques, but not actually absorb any of it. So my, my philosophy has always been to uh, focus on one thing and actually develop it. Um, and that's how I've uh, trained my jujitsu over the years. Uh, whenever I needed to work on an area, I'd recognize what was weak and I would uh, spend years working on it. Not just hours, not just weeks or months, but years working on you know, specific areas uh, like when I got my uh, black belt, the next three years I spent working on uh, one area, one area specifically I spent, you know, almost three years working on that and it paid off in the end. Uh, so my advice to people uh, with specific sports or anything like that is to actually find one thing and work on it for a long time. Um, with jujitsu and all these tutorials, people, you know, they, they gloss over things and they look at 10,000 different things. And if you do that right now and you come out of um, the situation and start training again, you're not going to be able to apply anything. So my advice for, you know, jujitsu specifically would be to, to look at, you know, a series and actually try to absorb it, study it inside and out, learn every, every uh, angle, every, every little detail you can of it. And that way, when you come out of this, maybe you can actually go to the gym and actually apply it. And I think that can be attributed to most sports, right? Uh, if you're a hockey player and you need to work on your slap shot or your wrist shot, right? You spend time working on that one thing, not doing a million different things right now. Now is the time to, in my opinion, to focus on something and actually develop it. So you have a, you know, a very unique skill set, a very strong skill set with whatever it is you think that you need to work on. Maybe your coach can help you with that. Or, you know, you, you look at yourself and you realize what you need to work on makes sense so are you uh obviously it's very uncertain when things are going to go back to normal and it looks like calgary at least just canceled pretty much everything for the summer um which i'm concerned about the effects that that's going to have on pretty much everybody especially small business owners i think it could be potentially catastrophic but what are you doing to plan for kind of your return to mma are you going to try and line up a fight as soon as you get back or what's your what are your plans around that um, honestly, I, I don't have a specific plan because everything's up in the air right now. I think that I there won't have an opportunity to probably next year to actually fight again. Mm -hmm. Um, cause the way things are going with the summer, you know, with 15 people or less and whatnot, um, it's going to take a while for them. Even if they do start phasing back, I think before we can have crowds big enough to have MMA shows. Um, we're not fortunate enough, like the UFC, the UFC can get away with their pay-per-view buys enough to, you know, still make money and do shows. Whereas the smaller shows here in Canada and that we, we don't have the ability to do that with pay-per-view buys. 
uh, we need the crowd. So I don't think it's going to be till next year. Um, but, you know, right now with the downtime, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be working on things because that's just, that's what I'm always doing. I'm always working on something. Um, so my goal will be to stay active and healthy during this time. And then, you know, as it looks like, you know, we're coming out of it and the show becomes possible, then starting to, to wrap things up and start getting back into that, uh, you know, fight shape like I was in March. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about how this is going to impact businesses like gyms? Oh, big time. Um, I think as it is right now, isn't it like 50% of small businesses are, don't think they'll be able to reopen after this is done. And that's extremely tragic. And um, I really hope that that doesn't happen with uh, our gym and other gyms in general. Um, be a really sad thing to happen. Um, and I, I don't really know what the answer is to, to any of that stuff right now. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping for the best so I have a place to go back to and train when this is all over. Yeah, for sure. Well, it looks like the government's now rolling out some stuff for small businesses for relief on rent. And obviously they had the loan and stuff. So hopefully that helps keep people afloat, but uh, yeah. it might be too little too late, but I, I guess we'll see. Yeah. So what's the most helpful thing you've learned in the last two months going through this? Besides how to deal with disappointment. <laughs> Um, that's, that's been, a, that was a tough question. I was trying to, to think of that one, uh, leading up to this. Um, one thing I've, you know, for as divided as everybody is on social media over, you know, what, how we should be handling this situation or everything like that. Um, the biggest thing I've noticed is, is, uh, how, you know, incredible, uh, most people are, especially the people that, you know, I'm friends with and that I know through the gym and that, um, you know, the support that people are giving each other and the kindness is, has been pretty, pretty incredible when you actually, you know, get away from Facebook and social media. Um, even like going outside and, you know, everybody's outside right now, but people are, you know, as, as, as high as tensions probably are, most people have been uh, very friendly and, and stuff like that. Uh, even the one day I came around the corner to go back to my car and a guy was walking and he stopped and he backed up and let me through and, you know, we smiled and said, thanks. And, you know, people are, I think, you know, still being very kind to one another. And that's, that's, uh, that's going to be huge going forward in this with, you know, how bad things are, are getting and whatnot. Yeah. It's been really amazing to see people really going out of their ways to, to help those in need and help other businesses in need. And I think that's been really cool. I think it's definitely brought a lot of people closer despite the social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, with small businesses and I think, you know, hopefully that they're going to get a lot of support from the local people population, you know, coming out of this and getting through it too, right? Trying to support the local businesses and that is going to be huge. Mm -hmm, for sure. Awesome. Do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up here? Uh, not right now. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time. Your uh, insights into athletic training have been I think beneficial to a lot of people and uh, I look forward to seeing your photography until you can get back into the gym. Thanks man. All right. Talk to you later, sure. Neil. Yeah. Talk to you later.